Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. I'm here with uh, Jason. What do we got? What is this cool looking robot arm? I this, love it. This is our um, SAR measurement system. SAR, what's that? Uh, specific absorption rate. It's the right. amount of energy that's absorbed by the human body from wireless devices. Cool. Mobile phones. It's exactly. the big one. That's yep, what that's everyone cares one. about, right? Yep, yep. yep. All right. Yep. What does it do? How does it work? Uh, this is an E-field probe. Um, essentially, we dip this probe in this liquid here. Yep. Uh, the liquid's got similar dielectric parameters to uh, the human tissue. Right. Uh, so we dip the probe in there, we put the phone underneath here. Yep. And uh, we measure the field inside the liquid. Fantastic. So that's just like a regular, that's just water with a bit of... A bit of sugar and a bit of salt. A bit of right? sugar and salt. And <laughs> yep. that's actually similar to brain tissue, yeah. apparently. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's the same, yeah. And is the idea is to heat, is to measure the heat how yeah. much it heats up by? Except, well, the idea is yeah, to measure the heat, but because uh, the, the temperature changes are too small for accurate right. measurements, we measure the E-field, right. and then using the dielectric parameters of the liquid, we can calculate what the SAR is. Fantastic. So you just put this at a specific height, yeah. is that, and two, then you scan over it? That's right. So two right. millimetres from the surface, we do a 2D two, scan. Two millimetres, okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. Nice. It's pretty and, close. Yep. <laughs> And uh, we do a 2D scan, find the, find the peak, and then do a 3D scan around that to find the penetration depth and right. the spatially average value. So this is like, does this rotate, this, uh, this, this, is a, this just manually rotates, right? Yeah, the phone, yeah. Yeah, this, the phone is, sits on there, this, is, all this is all made of plastic yep. and fiberglass. There's no metal parts in here, because, yep. uh, and same with this frame, there's no metal parts, because any metal parts can distort the field. Okay. Right. Um, and yeah, this is a design so that we can get the angles exactly right. We've nice. actually Grab got one up close. Yep. Let's have a look. So this phantom is actually used for body testing. It's a, a flat phantom. Um, right. Over here we've got the head phantom, which you'll see has. Ah, right. Okay, so that's a human head. Yep. That's a. They. they Came up with these dimensions after measuring the a thousand heads from the U.S. Army. <laughs> right. so this, is, this is the average head of a. Of a <laughs> That's US. the average U.S. soldier's head. That's right. Yes. I like it. And yeah, so we put the phone under here, and we, we line it up. We've got we've got little stickers to to help us line it up. The standards are pretty specific in the angles that we test. Right. Um, okay. And so that's where that's really where one of those uh, holders I, comes in. Here. Okay. So you just move the holder over to this yeah, bench here, and yeah, then we've got these mushrooms okay, to sort of align it. And yep. Fantastic! I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just filled with the same same. Very sort of similar. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, slightly different uh, uh, dielectric parameters because this is the brain tissue and this is muscle tissue. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right. this is it in your pocket. Okay. Right. Yeah. And. And you have to keep the room at a certain temperature, is that right? Yeah, uh, the tests have to be done sort of between 18 and 25 degrees, but once right. we start a test, it's not allowed to change by more than plus or minus one degree. Okay, so. right, so it's, it has to be has to remain fairly accurate. Yeah, because the dielectric parameters are the liquid changes with temperature. So, right. so if we measure it in the morning and then, you know, we're five degrees warmer in the afternoon, we're, we're not calculating the correct SAR. Right, got it. And how, how long does it take to scan? Uh, this, uh, this it scans about half an hour, so right. about 15 minutes for the 2D scan and then another 15 minutes to do the fine sort of 3D scan. Right, so you build up, so you go over it once with the 2D and build up a 2D map of it. Yeah, and then it's, you... a, it's a coarse sort of 2D map around that sort of maps yep. the field and then once we've found where the peak is, then we'll do quite a fine sort of 3D right. um, scan of, of and how do you do that? You just move it, move the fit, move it's the probe all, upwards. It's all run by software. Oh so. uh, right, okay. So, but, but to build up a three D map, the probe physically moves upwards. Yes, that's right. The, yeah. Right, and that excellent. So it's seven by seven by seven points. Um, fantastic! Yeah. I love that. it. Thanks for that. That's, that's fantastic. Right. What a cool bit of kit. How much does something like that cost? Uh, about a million dollars. About a million bucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. That's just the robot, then we've got the yep. base station simulators worth it. Okay, so this is the, yeah, so this is the um, test, this generates the, uh, simulates the 
Yeah, this, this exercise mobile is phone. a mobile phone, that's right. Right, so. because we're in a shielded Faraday cage here, so right. we can't get inside. So that generates into a SIM. Yep. It yep. just calls up a SIM and you put the SIM inside the you phone. Put the SIM inside and the it, phone, that's right. Yeah. Fantastic. That way we've got full control over the power that's being output by the phone and the right. frequency and all that, so we, it's a controlled environment. So these other um, uh, tables, they've got different sort of... Yeah, these are, it's, it's the same setup, it's just... Um, it's originally from back in the day, the, the dual band mobile phone, uh, the yep. 900 and the 1800 megahertz. So we have the 1800 megahertz liquid in here and here, and yep. the 900 in there and there. Um, nowadays with 3G and soon to be 4G, there's a lot of different frequencies. And yep. okay. you've got Wi-Fi as well. So we end up having to change um, liquids quite a lot, which is what's at the back there. The oh, okay, liquids. you've got all the different types of liquids and... Yeah. Right, so you can actually test Wi-Fi products here as well. We can, and, yeah. Right, what, what sort of RF ranges can you do? Like the power output levels, can you test? Do you know? Um, I'm not sure about the power output levels. I mean, a mobile phone's like a one or two watts two peak, watts isn't it? Peak, peak yeah. when it's transmitting. Yeah, so the average I think yeah. is around 250 milliwatts. But, right. um, but we've we've measured 10 watt transmitters in here, okay. um, and that wasn't quite getting to the to the peak of it yet and right. it measures it's got a huge dynamic range actually it's all fiber optics so there's not much noise okay um, right. it's very it's quite expensive equipment so we expect pretty good specs from it yep but um yeah so are you gonna hazard a guess as to whether or not mobile phone causes any problems do you uh use it <laughs> five hours a day no, i don't use it five head? hours a day okay no. I, I think if you use a mobile phone sensibly sensibly it, it yeah fairly safe. i think that's yeah. that's the go yeah. all right and what else these are just the, they're the controls on the back uh these are rf amplifiers oh rf amps yep yeah we've got that uh, set up before any measurements we do, uh, at the start of each day, we'll do a sort of a measurement of a known source. Got it. So All right. we'll just put a um, sine wave at 250 milliwatts, yep. the frequency that we're planning to measure, and measure the SAR of that to make sure it's sort of where we expect so that the system's working okay. Got it. Do a confidence check before we start. Right. Test. So how do you calibrate? How do, do you have a, re so just a reference standard is your calibration yeah. or what? Yeah, well, okay. well, well, all this equipment gets calibrated once a year in Switzerland. Right. And then we've, we get the reports back and then before we start a test, we'll do the same thing and confirm that our results are within 10% and that's just a confidence check to make sure the system's okay. working. Okay, yep. Because you really wouldn't need to be terribly accurate with this thing, would you? Is it, It's probably a relative. Um, a lot of it would might no, be relative. It's no, it's, 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 yeah. it's actually an absolute yeah. value? Yeah. Okay. It's the amount of, it's definitely, it's, it's measured in watts per kilogram, so it's the, right. it's the yep. power. That's, okay. Yeah. Got it. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That's all right.